Oh, I kicked the camera. Why do I do that every time? <laughs> Crazy. All right, folks, here we come. We are going to deal with basting a big quilt in a small space. So part of it is getting you a good camera angle so you can all see what's going on. I'm going to give everybody a minute to sign in. Happy Friday, folks. I'm so glad you're out there. Got to tuck some of these wires up and out of my way here and make sure that you're all here for me. I'm here for you. Let's see what's going on. Here for you. Oh, turn that volume down. Great. Okay, I've got a couple of folks here. This is fantastic. I'm just going to say happy Friday. It's kind of a weird camera angle, but as promised, we are going to baste a decent sized quilt right here on this fairly small table. Uh, so let me know where you're tuning in from. I'd love to say hello. My name is Rob Appel from So Well, uh, part of the YouTube Stitch in Heaven Network, quilt maker, uh, presenter uh, by the camera angle. It looks like I have no head. <laughs> uh, Kayomi, hello. Hi, how are you? And Cynthia. Oh, Houston, fantastic from Texas as well. This is great. I'm just going to tell a quick story while you're all saying hello. Hi, Shelby. Hi, Teresa. This is fantastic. Uh, last week, I was complaining about all the sweat on my head. Oh, first question. Microphone. Can you hear okay, or does it sound like it's off at a distance? Do we have good audio today? Because this is going to be important information, not just me chit-chatting. So I'll give me some thumbs ups. Give me some likes. Uh, if the uh, sound is great uh, while you're all logging in, thank you for being here. Happy Friday, everybody. This is awesome. I was just starting to tell the story that I started hours ago on filming. You can still see I forgot to clean up the design wall here. Um, the Splice Magic Book. A couple of weeks ago, we went live and I did the little demo on how to do the Splice Magic and how to get the three different half square triangles using the uh, block lock ruler or the slotted trimmer and um, I filmed it a couple days ago and the benefit of working out of the home studio and having a big team is I just felt like it could have been done better so I decided to refilm today and as I started refilm today and one of the reasons I thought it, got, thought it could have been done better is I lost my overhead camera like it stopped I use an iPhone and in the, like five minutes in it just went into panorama mode and so three different attempts today I've spent like two hours filming a 20 minute video over and over again so if it's not awesome by the time I have it edited I have no excuses I have four takes no overhead uh, finally got it at the end so that was kind of funny so I'm kind of sweating a little bit I feel a little slimy uh, I want to say hello to every hi D. Hi, Charlotte. Um, Rian, great to see you out there. And Maureen, this is really neat. Wow, I see uh, I'm a little fuzzy. Well, I wonder if that's the delay. Uh, am I fuzzy for anybody else? Maybe my screen's dirty over there. Should I? Let's go look at the screen on the iPhone. You never know what can happen. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe that helped if I'm fuzzy or not. Um, and then also, folks, there is, you know, we're live, there's internet, there's all kinds of silly delays and stuff that happen. Um, it's just, uh, Anna Marie, fantastic. I'm glad you're here as well. Um, so, yeah, great. Okay, fantastic. I think we've got our check-in. This is going to take a little bit, folks, because I want you to get this. And here we are. All of you, you encourage me. You're here. The video a couple of weeks ago where I was doing the show and tell of what I was going to be working on. I mentioned that I was going to long arm uh, the quilt top, the Texas Starlight quilt, the theme quilt for Stitch in Heaven this year, the one that's in the Better Homes and Gardens magazines. By the way, there are kits still available. Today, there's a midnight special where they're doing the Timberline uh, log cabin quilt for only 80 bucks. Um, that's a huge value. And then we have kits for the white background. I'm going to show you the black background, kind of a custom. We're going to make these. This is the uh, Texas Starlight quilt from Stitch in Heaven that is their um, Better Homes and Garden quilt. It's super exciting. And so... When I mentioned I was going to do that on the long arm, you all told me no YouTube presenter was brave enough to quilt a full quilt on a domestic machine on a small table in video. So here you go. I'm not afraid. We're going to do it, and we're going to do it together. But I got to tell you, I'm setting the rules. I'm in charge of this project, <laughs> meaning that I would love the domestic quilt for all of you. 
but there's going to be things that might be hard to see because I might use colors that might match. Um, but what I think will be really fun is we're going to start step by step. Today we're going to base the quilt and then in a few days we're going to get down, we're going to take that sandwich, we're going to cram it into my small little machine and we're going to start doing some free motion and just every few days we'll come back and visit some free motion. Maybe I can come up with some drills, some skill builders for all of you. But yes, I would be happy to quilt the whole quilt domestically. But I can't promise I won't get inspired and do some while you're not watching. That's the second rule. Um, so let's get this started. I just need a sip of coffee because it's that time of day for me. And it's finally the right temperature. I am monitoring all of you from the iPad. But I need this table. So now I'm coming over here. And I will come back and check comments in a little bit, but I can't see the comments anymore, okay? So I'll go over and check, but I just wanted to um, clear off this table. When I rebuilt the studio from a sewing room to a sewing and filming room, this table used to be almost all the way against this back wall, and it was much longer. It was kind of pushed into this corner, so I had just enough room to get around and clamp my backing to this table for basting, and the table was several feet longer in one direction and a foot or so longer into the other. This is now about 45 inches barely by about 60 inches or so, maybe 65 inches. Not a very big space. Um, and this is something that a lot of us are challenged with. So I just wanted to do this the way that most quilters do this, uh, that don't have the benefit of a big, giant, beautiful studio and all of that. So I have prepared my backing. I'm going to use a solid, and it was 45-inch fabrics. The quilt, I think, is about 72 by 68 or so. It definitely needed some patchwork. So you can see here, there's a seam that I've put into my patchwork. And what I want to do, because it's a rectangle table, I'm going to make, and it's a rectangle quilt, I'm going to just use the orientation of the table first in my advantage. Now my table, I specifically built, it's about an inch thick, and I can use these wonderful clamps. And we need uh, probably about this many, I like about three per side. Okay, so these clamps, you can get clamps in just about any size off of the internet, you just want to measure how thick is your table so that you can figure out how wide your clamp needs to be. I use the clamps in lieu of blue tape. Sometimes before when I was in the corner, like I said, I would blue tape one edge if I had to and then clamp the other edges. My batting, excuse me, my backing. This is the backing. You generally, if you're doing domestic seated free motion quilting, want two to three inches on every side around the quilt. So technically I should have about six inches in both directions longer. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to center the backing on my table. What you're going to see is I'm going to start by basting as we always should in the center of the project. But I'm going to have to move and recalibrate so that's why I'm centering the quilt in, or the quilt backing instead of putting it off to one corner. I really want to start in the middle. And I feel like I have equal overlap. That equal overlap is important because I still need to center my back, my batting and my quilt top. Okay. My seam was pressed. My backing has been pressed a few times. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to put a clamp in my top corner. I'm going to pull a little tension to the middle, and I'm going to put a clamp. Not a ton of tension. i got to be able to run safety pins through here. And then here I'm going to place another clamp. I'm going to go to the opposite end. I'm hoping you're able to still follow okay. Yeah, I can see that. I'm now coming down to the opposite end. What I like to do is actually start in the middle, and I pull, again, taut, but not super, super tight. Now I'm on a corner, and now I'm on the other corner. I've just clamped the backing. 
I'm not going to clamp the top and I'm not going to clamp the batting. I want all of that to float. You can see there are some wrinkles down here along the side, so we're not going to let this sit for very long because we don't want to build wrinkles into our backing, but we're going to be shoving the whole quilt under a machine too. So this is going to look like a suit once you've driven to the event you were trying to attend. Okay, now I'm right here in the middle. I'm going to pull in the middle. And because this is the long side and I want some exercise this afternoon, I'm going to come on over here and I'm going to pull again. And that was my excuse to get next to the coffee cup and check some comments. How y'all doing out there? You still doing good? Okay. If you do have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. I will be checking periodically. I'm going to now put a clamp between each of the clamps, pulling a little bit of fabric. Looks like I need just a couple more. And again, you see there's a little bit of a bump or a loft here. I'm just going to pull that down, clamp it, clamp it. And now I have really nice, crisp backing. If this was a print, print side down, seam is up because this is going to be inside and hidden inside of the quilt. Okay. So from here, I have cut my batting, the fluffy stuff that goes in the middle, also larger. And I think I set it this direction. Nope, this direction. And when I cut this a few days ago, I've kind of been letting it lay nice and over the long arm, the rails, just lofting or, or floating. One of the things I'm trying to say is it's not always a great idea to grab your batting right out of the package from your local quilt shop and start basting. You want to let the air get to it, let it fluff up a little bit. What I like to do is pull this batting so that I can't see usually any of the fabric, which generally means I've covered everything I need. You do need to be careful with the clamps though because the clamps can snag, as you can see here. And I need to cheat up just a few inches in that direction down there. Checking both sides. This isn't a terrible job for two people. <laughs> but how many of us have a friend that comes over for basting day. I'd like to know how many of you have a basting buddy comes over as basting or even better, you go to their house and they've got it all set up and food and the pool table or whatever it is. <laughs> okay, now these threads don't matter, but you know me, I'm a nitpicker, so that's what happens. And I've got probably just enough fabric. I can release a little bit on the edge to make sure things are feeling pretty darn good. But now, I want to float the quilt top right sides up on here. That will determine for me, do I have everything centered and the backing and the batting all correct? Here is the beautiful Texas Starlight quilt. Like I said, this was done as a pattern this year as Stitch in Heaven was chosen as one of the top 10 quilt shops by Better Homes and Garden Magazine for the second time, which is an incredible honor for us. And they have an incredible white version and then these beautiful ombre fabrics to make the stars. The kit that's available today is white with the ombre and it is absolutely gorgeous. They are making the quilt here as a kit, but I had requested a black background so my dear friend Tiffany Hayes pieced this together for me, and she did an incredible good job. And Oh, while we're bragging about Tiffany Hayes, folks, look at this. She's going to be so embarrassed. But she should be complimented. She has pressed all of her seams open, 
which is going to make this a treat to machine quilt because all of these parts that would normally be extra thick won't be nearly as thick because she's taking the time to press all of her seams open while construction. It's something she tells me she really likes to do. And this will be the first quilt I've actually machine quilted. I am a one direction seam presser, certified one direction seam presser. <laughs> and I, um, I'm looking forward to do working this way. Now, I forgot to notice, I didn't want you to think I was OCD, but I am petting my quilt, or Tiffany's quilt, the quilt, our quilt, because I am smoothing from the middle out, and I'm really watching the seam allowances in the project to make sure that they look nice and crisp and are lined up with my table. Maybe you can see how this looks so nice and smooth down here at this bottom row, this bottom area. And I'm going to do this petting maneuver for a couple of laps around the quilt. I was doing it with the batting too. I don't know if you noticed, but I just, it's, I'm, we're moving just like we will when we start our machine quilting. We will start somewhere here in the center and we will radiate in all directions when we're sitting at the domestic machine. So you want to think about not only where our first basting pin and a second go right here, but all of our movement, we're moving. And this is why we always ask you to have extra batting and extra backing because the quilt top is going to smooth out and flatten out and technically grow to its real size as we quilt it down. Okay, let me come on over and do a comments and questions check. I hope you're all enjoying this. Oh, uh, Mark, you has a great comment about uh, covering a dining room table. I'll encourage all of you to go read that. Um, this is awesome. And oh, thank you, Jenny. I'm glad you're enjoying this. And uh, Lone Quilter, Jenny the Lone Quilter. Okay. No, Jenny, you're right. Not everybody has a table like this. Most of us just have a standard table, but most clamps, that's why I was pointing out, you can get all different thicknesses. And you could glue a little felt to your clamps. But let me say this, folks. I'm going to safety pin base this now. Over time, this does scratch your table. So if you are using like a nice dining room table or anybody's borrowed table or whatever, you might want to layer your quilting cutting mats underneath so that the pin is actually hitting your rotary cutting mat and not the actual wood of the table. Um, that's a real good point. Okay, here we go. Now for basting, I love to use safety pins. And I love to use, it's a curved safety pin. I apologize, I do not remember the size. In the description on the video today, I put the link for the quilt kit for this. I can go back in later and add the link for these pins if anybody needs a good link for some curved safety pins. But they're nickel plated, they're not gonna rust. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a single safety pin and I'm gonna drop it basically about where center is. Um, not right on a seam. And I'm going to push down and let the curve come back up. Okay. And that is my first base. From here, I want to build a grid. I don't want it to look like somebody shotgunned a bunch of safety pins onto my quilt. I want to know where the pins are at all times. And the best distance that most of us can use, we all know it from the surfing community as the shaka. So with your shaka, you can now drop another pin. So what I'll often do is pet, shaka, and I'm also about two and a half blocks away. So now I can just think, watch, I'm gonna work in the same direction. I'm gonna pet down another two blocks and I'm gonna drop a pin right here, which is awesome because the edge of my table is right here. Okay, then I'm gonna walk some of these pins over to the other side. Shaka again. A little petting, a little shaka, and I'm going to find and I'm going to throw in another safety pin. Pet, pin, and my edge is here. So I might as well just drop another one here for now. And we're going to do the same thing in the perpendicular direction, just because I wanted to throw a geometry term in there. So we can bounce down a couple more squares. Pin, maybe I'll get in the habit of always putting the pins in the black so I can see them easily. That's never a bad idea. 
You do not want a machine quilt over your pens. That's a terrible idea. Now, folks, also, this quilt is only hanging over a little bit on each edge. So basically, a majority of the quilt will be basted in this first go about. So I'm just going to slide down here, but my table ended, so I can't really get this last border either. But I'll also tell you, and you'll see in several weeks from now, if you watch all of the live quilting of this quilt, as I get closer and closer to the outside edge with the machine quilting, I am there, I usually pull the pins out earlier. At the beginning, I'll quilt right up to a pin and then pull it out. But remember that that ripple, that loft, that extra we were talking about earlier, it's going to be like a wave, starting as a small little wave and building up to a tsunami by the time it reaches that border or the edge. So as the ripple grows, I release the pins earlier so that I don't create a crease that I accidentally quilt down. So I actually won't go and put a pin at this edge because by the time I get to this pin, I wouldn't leave a pin on the edge anyways. We'll see if that's a great idea. <laughs> it's always worked for me in the past. But I'll also tell you, folks, since I've gotten that long arm, I really haven't done much domestic machine quilting seated. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, something I, I that's why I got into quilting. But um, the long arm sure makes it easier on the body for standing. Okay, next step. I don't even know what step we're on. But if you can see, hopefully, we've got a grid of pins and a grid of pins. Now I'm simply going to make like silver graph paper. I'm just going to put the next pin right where it goes between the grid. So now I'm just going to make lines and I'm going to work in sections. So I'm going to pet, like I said now, to the corner, down, and I'll put a pin here, and I'll put a pin down here, equal to where the other pin's at. and pin, pin to the outside edge, next one goes right here, and there should be one last one here on the corner of my table for security reasons. Okay, so now this grid, this quadrant, I should say, this quarter of the quilt has been basted. So then I come over here and I'll do the same thing. So I'd like you to all know we're having a special dinner this evening while I'm basting because I don't know what else to talk about <laughs> at this moment. It's my mother-in-law's birthday soon so we're having thai food tonight next door at the mother-in-law's house which will be very exciting so blessed to get to live so close to all of my family members that way i do feel spoiled anyone having a special dinner tonight i'd like to hear about that in the comments also and while i'm coming to this side of the table let me just do a quick comments check we're almost done basing this project folks Fantastic, folks. Appreciate all the comments. Got some, some good tips for each other out there. I love the way our community supports each other and uh, encourages each other with their quilting. Now, I'm on the other side. I'm just finding that grid again. I'm going to drop another safety pin here. Now, design-wise, I have no idea what I'm going to do. I would like to actually quilt a majority of the black with black thread. I'm afraid that's going to make for a terrible demonstration of machine quilting. So I might do a gray thread. I'm also considering maybe doing variegated thread quilting in the black, but like where I'm working here where there's a greenish turquoise section using a green turquoise, a red, you know, a hotter variegated thread. So we might do that in the black, but what I like about this is the contrast. And so if I put too much color of thread in the black, 
it is going to lose some of that contrast. And that just comes from years of quilting and color play of you start to get kind of familiar with what's going to happen as you quilt and add different textures and different appearances. So something like this could actually be very simply echo quilted around the stars. And that might be fun in a, in a again, a light gray or medium gray. Give a little bit of show. Not a lot. Um, I might just doodle all over this, but it's kind of symmetrical. So it wouldn't be a bad idea to take some time and do some markings. Uh, I have a friend. She's a bit of a quilt maker. At least that's what she tells us all. Her name is Angela Walters. <laughs> Love you, Angela. And one of the things she really talks a lot about is not worrying about the whole quilt like I was just doing. You know, what am I going to really do with the whole design all over this? Well, let's make some series of rules, but she really encourages us to just think about what we can control under our hands, especially while being domestic. So maybe I want to put some fun little, you know, uh, half swirls in each one of these diamond shapes. I could go through and do that, and that would be like basting again. Wouldn't take the pins out unless they were in the way. Uh, quilt those because each star has a, a diamond in it. She might also talk about doing sections of, of playing where she might choose a several different blocks and use those blocks as one motif like swirls or pea pods. And then another block as a different motif like wishbones or, or stippling or something like that. I, I want this one to be a little bit more symmetrical. If you want to do marking, this would be a good time to use a light colored chalk pencil and do some diagramming. I will usually do that before I baste, though, um, just so the pins don't get in the way. But what I don't really do is draw exactly what I want to quilt because that stresses me out because I have to stay on that line. So I might do more like label, like pods or circles or diamonds or whatever with a little chalk mark um, or just a quick symbol that would say maybe in this section I'm going to move from pea pods into straight line diamonds. Um, just, you know, as I do some planning as well. So I have a feeling I should get organized, get a plan going for all of us by the next time we machine quilt this thing, because um, it would be very, very wise to have a plan before I start. Now, I was noticing in a few of the comments, um, again, this was the biggest quilt I had. You asked me to do a big quilt in a small machine on a small table. So this is what I have to work with. I can keep educating even though I'm out of quilt. Let's pretend like this was a big king size quilt at this point. First and most important step, remove the box of pins from on top of the quilt so you don't put them on the floor. Then at that point, just go ahead and undo your clamps as you go around the project. It doesn't matter really which order you take these off in now. Because what I would suggest we do is we're just going to now find a final corner of our project. So if this was a king or queen size quilt, you're probably going to move it several feet, where I'm just going to move it a few inches. But I could come over here and bring it until the point where I have this corner up here so we can finish the basting out, okay? What I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna clamp the entire project. I just went quilt top backing batting on these sides, the long side here, okay? And now I'm petting and I'm pulling and as I get over here, I'm gonna grab the backing first and I'm gonna give it a good snug tug to make sure that nothing got rippled or creased up underneath there. Now I'm gonna grab everything and clamp it. And I still have my backing up here. So you can see I have a couple of inches. So up here, cause I want it to float, I could just get a hold of my backing, pull it taut to the corner, to the middle, to this edge here, then I can come in and I can pet and I can place these last safety pins 
along this section. I'm hoping that made some sense. So if you were doing that with a king or queen size quilt on a small table like this, you most likely would do all four corners from center. So what I just did now, you would go ahead and do three more times. You can see I'm cheating. Even while we're talking, I took the time to do it, so I might as well throw the pins in along this outside edge. Hopefully that makes some sense and really helps those of you who have been struggling or have been trying to do this on the floor or have been working. And I know the blue tape is a, something we often use, but man, I've been so frustrated to have so many times where it comes loose while I'm quilt or basting a big quilt. That's when I got into the clamps and the clamps have really never let me down. They, they sometimes break, but they really don't ever let me down. So let me grab the iPad and then bring everybody over here again and see how you're all doing. Oh, well, thank you, Jenny. Great tips. I appreciate that. Okay, let me make sure I can see if anyone has any questions here. If you do have questions, I'm going to start wrapping up the video. So please ask your questions now. I'll give us a couple of minutes to let the questions come in, and I'll try to answer them for us. I'm going to scan up to make sure I didn't miss anything here. Um, oh, good. Uh, Pat's made some chili. Mom made some chili tonight. That's going to do some great. <laughs> okay, here's a great question. After the basting, do you sew a perimeter eighth inch through the layers? I have seen in long arming, but I don't know when it's done. No. I think I understand the question, so I'm going to try to repeat it back to make sure we're on the same page. I believe you're asking me if the next thing I would do is stitch around the outside edges. My answer is no, not at all. I want to leave everything loose on the outside. I believe the long armors are running a basting stitch, so they've done the top basting on the long arm. And then they may be basting down the sides as they go or finishing that way to keep everything nice before they trim. But for domestic, Quilting, tabletop machine, seated. We're going to be fluffing and stuffing and pushing on all of this. So every bit of extra fabric we need to move from the middle of the quilt out of the quilt. That's how we're going to prevent our ripples and wrinkles on the back. So I do not want anything securing the outer edges. I want the backing and I want the batting to be able to be like those waves and go and crash on the sand and go away until another good swell comes. Okay, um, perfect. Marquis, I see that we, um, yep, awesome. And get those questions in, folks, because it's Friday night. I've got Thai food on the brain, and I'm so excited that you are all here. Um, thank you very much for the positive feedback, everybody. I'm super excited to be doing this. If you're just tuning in um, for uh, the end of the show, this is the Texas Starlight quilt. This is the quilt that Stitch in Heaven did as the pattern for Better Homes and Gardens magazine. Um, we have a kit available. I believe it comes with the magazine, which is super cool. Dick has a white background or making backgrounds like this for the black. I wanted to have this one special done for our studio here in California. I was encouraged to start doing some domestic free motion machine quilting on the set on the little juki that I have. So throughout the next few weeks, I will come live every few days and we're just going to all quilt this together and we'll do it all the way to the binding together. So this is going to be our fun project. We're going to do live together until it's done um, just so we can have some fun. It's probably on Friday afternoons or whenever uh, I have the opportunity to, to be with you all. So uh, thank you for being here and I really appreciate you all. I appreciate the support. Make sure you take advantage of some of the midnight specials that are going on over at Stitch in Heaven. They've got an awesome kit like I said on special right now and uh, just a bunch of other fantastic stuff. I was mentioning at the beginning of the video I was just filming the final steps to how to build this quilt. If you want to get this quilt the kits are now available. Um, it doesn't have the applique for the sew well but it does have all of the fabrics all 14 colors here and it comes with the awesome splice magic book um, which was written by the team at uh, Stitch in Heaven, Tiffany Hayes, and Christy J. Smith. And it's a really, really cool book. So I've got, like I said, kits, 
more tutorials, all kinds of fun coming up. So thank you very much. Make sure you are subscribed to the Stitch in Heaven YouTube network. Have yourselves a fantastic weekend, everybody. Thank you for being a quilter. Thank you for being here with me today. We'll see you real soon.